Good morning and welcome to week three, day three. Let's get started with English language arts. On page, on table of contents, it's going to tell you under week three to go to page 17. So I'm going to go to page 17. Under day three, you're going to see the two activities. Those are word rates on page 47 and they for your home on page 50. So let's get started on page 47 with the word rate. So word rate. Help your child pick out the first sound in words, an important step in learning to read. Give your child one minute to name as many objects, people, foods, etc. that starts with a given sound, such as when the minute is up, have them try to beat their score with another sound, such as er. It's important to say the sound the letter makes rather than the letter sound. Alright, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to have my minute timer here. One minute. And I'm going to do sound B. I am actually going to do it on my notebook and I'm going to press start with sound B. Ready? Go. Boy, ball, balloon, box, break, Brandon, Brandy, Brick, Block, Block, Black, Blimp, Blue, Bird, Bunny, big. That's my timer. So I was able to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen. Now I'm going to do another sound and see if I can beat this score. My new sound going to be E. It's going to be the And go. Lollipop. Lollipop. Lily. Lost. Lick. Lullaby. Lint Limp Lysol. Lysol. Ah, oh, that's time. Wow, I only did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, students and parents, it's your turn to try at home. See if you can beat your time. Now we're going to move on to activity that's on page 50, and it's label your home. That is very easy. All you got to do is Grab a notepad and start naming. For example, water bottle. Water bottle. So parents, go ahead and start labeling your home. 
we're going to move on to our reading and writing. For reading and writing, you're going to choose a book from home or read Nighttime Investigation. You're going to find that on page 90. After that, you're going to ask the students what happened in the beginning, middle, and the end of the story. And three facts that the students learned. We're going to ask the students to draw and label three pictures showing the beginning, middle, and end of the story or the three facts. So let's go to page 90. Time investigation. Meet Laura Prue. Laura Prue is a scientist who investigates animals. That means she tries to learn more about animals. As a child, Laura loved animals. When Laura grew up, she went to school to learn more about them. She learned where animals live, what animals eat, and how animals stay safe. Kangaroo rats. One type of animal that Laura investigates is the kangaroo rat. Kangaroo rats are small animals that live in the desert. Kangaroo rats use their two back feet to jump, just like kangaroos. They live in holes that, dig, that they dig in the ground. Laura has always loved to learn about animals. This is a kangaroo rat. Kangaroo rats are nocturnal. That means they are awake at nighttime. During the daytime, they sleep in their holes. Lots of kangaroo rats live in this field. They hide underground in the daytime. Collecting and recording data. Laura wanted to know how many kangaroo rats there were in one part of the desert. To collect data on kangaroo rats, Laura and her team of scientists went into the desert at nighttime. Laura used a ruler to measure kangaroo rats. Laura and her team put out traps filled with food that kangaroo rats like to eat. At nighttime, kangaroo rats were, went into the traps to eat the food. This is one of the traps Laura used. The traps do not hurt the kangaroo rats. Laura observed how many kangaroo rats went to eat the food in the traps. She put a tag on each kangaroo rat that went into a trap. That way, she could be sure she only counted each kangaroo rat one time. Laura is using a machine to check the tag on a kangaroo rat. Laura also looked at the sky while she was observing the kangaroo rats at nighttime. On some nights, the moon was full and bright in the sky. On other nights, the moon was less full and less bright in the sky. Laura recorded data about the kangaroo rats in a notebook. She also recorded data about what the moon looked like each night. Laura recorded data in a notebook. By recording her data, Laura made sure she could look at it again later. Sometimes a kangaroo rat hopped into Laura's notebook. Organizing data. Laura organized her data in a data table. The table showed how many kangaroo rats she had counted each night. The table also showed full and bright the, uh, how full and bright the moon was each night. Here it is not so full, here it is full. So I guess from my observations, the more full the moon was, the more rats she would see. By organizing her data, Laura found a pattern. She noticed that when the moon was full and bright in the sky, more kangaroo rats came out of their holes. When the moon was less full and less bright in the sky, fewer kangaroos came out of their holes Laura wanted to explain the pattern. She thought about why more kangaroo rats would come out when the moon was full and bright in the sky. Laura thought about why the pattern happened. What Laura learned. When the moon is full and bright in the sky, kangaroo, kangaroo rats can see better. The light from the moon may help the kangaroo rat find food. The light from the moon may also help the kangaroo rats watch out for animals that want to eat them. Kangaroo, kangaroo rats can see more on nights when the moon is full and bright. 
When the moon is less full and less bright in the sky, it is harder for kangaroo rats to see. That may that might make it harder for for the kangaroo rats to find food. That might also make it harder for the kangaroo rats to watch out for animals that want to eat them. This is a fox that eats kangaroo rats. By looking at the night sky, Laura could predict what the kangaroo rats would do. She could predict that more kangaroo rats would come out of their holes when the moon was full and bright. She could predict that more kangaroo rats would stay in their holes when the moon was less full and less bright. Many kangaroo rats came out at night when the moon was full and bright. Laura found the pattern by investigating. She observed the kangaroo rats and the night sky. She recorded her data so she could look at it. Finished with our book and our two activities. I'm going to check off day three of week three. Stay tuned for math. Math. We are going to do week three, day three, and we're going to solve the problem, word problem, lesson thirteen. And you will find that on page one eighty-two. So let's go to one eighty-two. Lesson thirteen. Here we are, and let's get started. Word problem 13. 10 snowflakes fell on Sam's mitten, and 6 fell on his coat. 9 of the snowflakes on Sam's mitten melted. How many snowflakes were left? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10. This is from his mitten. Now I'm going to draw six that were on his coat. One, two, three, four, five, six. So don't forget, ten, six. But now it's telling us that nine of the mittens melted. So what we're going to do is take away nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One is left from here. Six is left from here. What I did here was ten minus nine. So remember nine of them. And how many are left? <coughs> one. <coughs> so I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna add it with six. So one plus six. Seven. So how many mittens are left? I mean, how many snowflakes are left? Seven. Seven snowflakes are left. And then we finish with lesson 13, word problem. The check mark it. And parents, don't forget to work on the problem set with the students. Lesson 13, problem set. You're going to find that on page 214 and 215. Questions 1 to 6. 1 to 6 for your problem set. After that, you have finished with week 3, day 3 of the math. Let's move on to science and social studies. Start with science and social studies. Week 3, page 39. Yesterday we learned all about frogs. Today all about mammals. So you're going to read the mammals background information with your child and that's on page 313. Rabbits have many predators. How do you think rabbits stay safe in their habitats? So make sure to ask the students this. Have your child draw or write a story about a rabbit staying safe or avoiding a predator. So let's go to page 313. <coughs> Learn about mammals. Parents, you're going to go ahead and read this background information to your students. After that, you're going to play the video of Brain Pop that I will record for you about mammals. When you're done with that, you are done with science and social studies for day three, week three. 
I will see you again tomorrow. Have a great afternoon. We're off to the zoo. Aren't you excited, Moby? I can't wait to see the elephants. They're the largest mammals that live on land. What are mammals? A vertebrate is an animal that has a spine or backbone. All mammals are vertebrates. All mammals use lungs to breathe oxygen. Even mammals that live in the ocean, like whales and dolphins, breathe with lungs. Very young mammals get help from adults for protection and food. When they're born, mammals rely on milk from their mothers to survive. Cold-blooded animals like frogs use the environment to help control their body temperatures. A frog warms up in the sun and cools down in water or mud. But mammals are warm-blooded animals, which means they control their body temperatures. Even when it's really cold, all mammals have hair or fur. I know whales and dolphins don't look like they have hair, but they're actually born with tiny hairs, which fall out later. A pangolin is a mammal that lives in Africa and Asia. Its body is covered in thick, tough scales, which are actually made out of joined hairs. Mammals can look really different from each other. They can be really big or really small. Rhinos, porcupines, manatees, and bats are all mammals. A jerboa is a tiny hopping mammal that lives in the deserts of Asia and northern Africa. A mandrill is a monkey that lives in African rainforests. The male mandrill can be really colorful. Yep. People are mammals too. All mammals have ways to get food, water, and shelter. How are mammals adapted to their environments? A habitat is a place where plants and animals live. Mammals live in different kinds of habitats, like rainforests, oceans, and deserts. They even live in the snowy Arctic. All mammals have ways to survive in their habitats. Camels have adapted to life in really hot deserts where there's very little water. Their long legs keep their bodies away from the hot ground. Thick fur protects them from the heat, and camels rarely sweat, so they don't lose water. Their humps store body fat, which can be turned into water. Some animals have adapted to life in pretty cold places. Black bears live in the forests of North America. During warm months, they eat and fatten up. During the cold winter, when food is hard to find, bears sleep for months at a time. They wake up on warmer days to hunt and eat. That's a giant ant eater. It lives in the rainforests and grasslands of Central and South America. It has long, curved claws to dig for insects like ants and termites. The ant eater sleeps under its long, bushy tail to stay warm and to hide from predators. It has a really long, sticky tongue to grab insects to eat. Camouflage helps many mammals hide in their environments. The cheetah's spots help it hide in the grass so it can sneak up on prey. And Paula have tan fur to help them blend into their habitats. They also travel together in herds to stay safe from predators like cheetahs, lions, and leopards. Whales are some of the largest mammals on the planet, but even they have predators. Many whales have light bellies that help them blend in with the sky when predators look up at them from below. Their dark backs blend in with the water when predators look down at them from above. What is happening to some species of mammals? People are destroying animals' habitats to make space, or to get natural resources like wood. When this happens, 
animals lose their homes. When an animal or plant is endangered, there are only a few of their species left. The tapir has become endangered because its jungle habitat is being cleared. Elephants are also endangered because of habitat loss and because people hunt them for their tusks. The snow leopard lives in the mountains of Central Asia. Sometimes it attacks livestock to get food. Farmers trap and hunt snow leopards to keep their livestock safe and to get their fur. The Amazon River dolphin is endangered because of water pollution and dams. Many get caught in fishing nets. People are working together to save habitats and protect plants and animals. Governments all over the world set up reserves or protected lands where plants and animals can live safely. People have passed laws, like the Endangered Species Act, which protects plants and animals and conserves their land. Zoos educate people about endangered species and are helping to save them. We saw so many cool mammals today. I don't think you're a mammal, Moby. Well, for one thing, you don't have any hair.